Oops, I have to apologize for uh, what you see on the screen right now. I screwed up a little bit in my scripts that were supposed to support superscript. If you look at the first <laughs> HB, there's a, a very small superscript N next to that. I'm sorry, I got the superscript <laughs> working, but the font size is a little bit off. Anyway, this next talk is about HB superscript huge N, which is an extreme HB. All right, so... Why HB? Uh, HB are Harper and Bloom, and there are many, many follow up papers called HB Superscript Plus, HB Star, et cetera. So these names have become a tradition in the area. But Hopper and Bloom don't have exclusive claim to these initials, so our innovation is placing Antonio Nicolosi in the exponent. Not sure how he feels about that uh, tiny little n. Uh, so next up, uh, move over DJB. I'll be staking my claim to my initial CJB. So alphabetically first, maybe not chronologically. All right, so about these protocols. Uh, the setting, um, originally designed to be simple enough for humans to perform, but now they're considered simple enough for RFID devices to perform. HB was passively secure uh, based on learning parity with noise, and since then, research has focused on achieving security in more realistic models. HB plus achieved active security, but not full man-in-the-middle security. And uh, several variants were proposed, but uh, channeling Ron Rivest and Abe Lincoln, just because you say your protocol is trusted, uh, doesn't necessarily mean it should be. Incidentally, Lincoln may or may not have said that. There are a lot of uh, sayings attributed to Lincoln uh, that he didn't actually say, but this did actually appear in an 1862 newspaper article written about Lincoln. Uh, so there's some sort of connection. Um, random HB Sharp. Uh, was proposed and supposed to be man in the middle secure, but it only resisted a particular attack. Uh, so this is sort of embarrassing, but fortunately smart cryptographers solved the problem using awesome crypto techniques. So we can feel safe at last. Uh, leakage, leakage, leakage. Um, here's a visual representation of some of the awesome crypto techniques they used. Uh, they're from papers by Xavier and Brent. Um, okay, so it might still be worth finding a simple protocol and a proof, and we attempt to do this. And our tools may be useful elsewhere. They include extending XOR to the interval 0, 1, a new assumption learning subspaces with noise, which is provably equivalent to LPN, uh, probabilistic verification, which is a new technique for defending against verifier queries, which are the main difficulty with man-in-the-middle security, and the tried-and-true sequence of games method. So what is HBN? It's extremely simple. Uh, while HB requires the tag and reader, i.e. The, uh, the prover and the verifier, to compute a noisy secret linear function AX plus E, uh, HBN simply changes that to a noisy secret bilinear function, A transpose X B plus uh, or E, where X is now a matrix. And interestingly, uh, HBN is actually not the first bilinear protocol uh, Kiltz, Pichak, Cash, uh, Jane Venturi, 2011, best paper at Eurocrypt. Uh, the, one of their protocols can actually be rewritten as applying a noisy bilinear map. Um, so we have a new technique the, for defending against verify queries, the probabilistic verification, where R computes its own uh, uh, noisy uh, A transpose XB plus its own noise uh, that wasn't uh, used before that might be interesting for other things. All right, so some of the uh, notation we introduce is new and interesting. We extend the uh, XOR operator to the uh, probabilities, and there will be a quiz later on, so remember all that. There are pictures. Uh, the overall idea is you have uh, phase one and two keys, uh, X and Y, or X, J, and Y, J for different rounds. Initially, they're equal, that's the real protocol, but at each step, you add a random rank one matrix, and the LSN allows you to do this. And with each layer, they grow further apart. So after sufficiently many applications, the bilinear, form, uh, the bilinear forms are completely independent. So it's simple, efficient, technical tools might be useful elsewhere, it's available on ePrint, uh, but unfortunately, it's not very efficient. Uh, but in upcoming work, we achieve efficiency, so look for it on an e